as we go. So if there is a way that we can stop the auction and prevent the foreclosure, would you want me to try it? Can you hear me? I don't know. If you don't know who I am by now, I don't know what you've been doing. You've been asleep? Let me wake you up with something. Straight up. Yeah. Allow me to reintroduce myself. I'm Chris Monroe. R to the O-E. I flip houses, rent cars, and make money. You know I'm not no motherfucking dummy. This is how we do All right, sorry about that, uh, Carl. Yeah. Yeah, this is Chris. Uh, I was referred over to you by Moses about your house over on Ravenwood. Uh, I was just trying to see what yeah. I can do to help you out there. Yeah, I'm fine. Got man, I got screwed around on that. But uh, yeah, the people that were pro purchase it. They, yeah, I think they just wanted me to hold on to it until they could get you know, uh, the foreclosure thing, but, uh, anyway, I was talking to, uh, they won't, it's tomorrow. Is it tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon, the auction? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what time it is tomorrow. I can find out. No problem. So Carl, what would be like the best case scenario for you in this situation? Uh, right now, talking to the lawyer, he would see he said it would be best just to let him go ahead. And then that way, I'm done with it. I um, bet it is. They get paid for yeah, that. Say, <laughs> so I bet uh, they, I bet they do say go ahead because that's how they get paid. We don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They only get paid on the files that they, you know, foreclose on. So we don't want to do that. We want to prevent that from happening. Uh, correct. You would want this auction uh, stopped, right? Yeah, that's what he was saying. But uh, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I'm gonna tell you the truth straight up from the beginning. I, I'm a straight shooter, Carl. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, you know, so many people out there on the agenda. Cause I definitely thought these people were straight and uh, honest because they stayed in church. Gave me closing date, and they switched it once. And then it was supposed to happen this Monday, and they just kind of, you know, played around. And, and then they told us they got it extended. And when they on a call, they didn't have it extended. So, uh, they, yeah, that's the so first I, thing I we did. Just, yeah, that's typically. Yeah, that's typically the first thing we do is try to get that auction stopped. So, uh, what were you trying to sell it for uh, when you were selling it to them? Uh, I was trying to sell it for forty one. Forty one thousand. I would have even took forty one. I even would have took a, a loss and paid up to five or ten thousand on it just to help my credit, keep my credit from getting bad. So I figured I'm so old now, I don't mind anyway. So you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I definitely understand how you feel, and I mean, it, it make it feel like you don't have any options, but I'm here to tell you there yeah, are yeah, options. Yeah, they just, they just took away the options because I had a lot of people that were looking at it and was willing to uh, buy it, to, you know, to keep my credit out of what's count, but they just hung stung me along for so long, so then it was too late to put other people that you didn't come and look at that. I had stuff with people that was interested. Um, so, uh, so at this point, you would still want to just sell it? Is that really what you would like to do? That's what I wanted to do. And now uh, they said they would buy it and I'd get uh, like some money out of the deal too. So they were willing to pay over the market value they were saying, which I should have knew something was going on there. Yeah. But that's when you know something fishy right there. So you paying more than everybody else. Something ain't right here. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I so, should have known, but I was so anxious to get it done and, and get what I was going to get out of it. What they said they were going to give out of it. I didn't use common sense to get a check to 
went sooner than where you know told him to do. Yeah. So, well, nevertheless, yeah, Carl. Now you, know, you when you when you're not used to that situation and where somebody like that that's been screwing people for so long, they know what to say and what to do. Yeah, sometimes uh, people sure. just don't know what they're doing too. That's also a possibility. They think they know what they're doing, but they have no clue how to work these deals and actually stop the auction and actually make sure you get what they promised you. Now, how much did you still yeah. owe on the house? Approximately. Uh, how much did you still uh, owe on this property? I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you said. How much do you still owe on the property? Uh, 30 something. About 38000 yeah. Did, that's not counting the lawyer fee and stuff like that. Okay. And then, so, what did they tell you was the reinstatement amount was, just to bring it current? Uh, they didn't say. They didn't say, because, uh, you know, once they put it up, the mortgage company was kind of like, they is up for foreclosure, you know? And then they were supposed to, the people I was dealing with were supposed to get it extended when they see the title company was having problems with what they see. So they're going to get the mortgage company to extend the closing date. And uh, they never did. Now, did you sign anything to give them authorization to speak to your lender? Uh, yeah. And that's why I missed out. I did sign a paper. Okay. Well, I'm just making sure because they can't even talk to your lender without your permission either way. So, um, 38000 is owed. You don't know what the arrears are. And so basically, you're just looking to sell it for what you owe on it and be done with it. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. And when I called the lawyer, he, he was like, So this attorney, the attorney you nothing else they could do once they foreclose, and it's over and done. And then I won't have like to maintain the house because I'm not gonna don't really have the money. If I bought the house, if I got the house, I wouldn't have the money to maintain it and rent it out and all that. So it would be worth it to me, you know. So and so see, that'd be just good with it. And so, Carl, you spoke to the trustee for the bank. Is that the attorney you're referring to? I spoke to the lawyer. I guess they're the trustee. Uh, the law firm, the person that's in charge of it from the law firm. What was that, Millsap and Singer or a different company? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh, the usual suspects, huh? Oh, the usual. Yep, they do more foreclosures in St. Louis than anybody, I think. So, well, Carl, I am willing to try to help you out. I can't make any promise with it being such a short notice. We usually need about a day. Yeah. Um, the yeah, only... it's, it's so short. I, I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, I just I just know I got played and I was expecting to get, you know, some money out of the deal, but it didn't work out. So I'm not so... going to worry about it. Because I was going to tell you, if you want, I can uh, try to see if I can stop this auction and get this resolved for you, but that's totally up to you. 
Um, I'm more than happy to do it. It won't cost yeah. you anything. Um, which way would you like to go with this? It's so short. I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, I wish I had a realized what was going on earlier. And uh, before I signed the thing and uh, before I dealt with these people, but you never know. And if you've never been in that predicament before and where you're dealing with these type of people, so if there is a way that we can stop the auction and prevent the foreclosure, would you want me to try it? Uh, no, don't worry about it. I don't want me to with it. My credit like be messed up, but I'm not I'm not trying to purchase anything else anyway. Okay, Carl. I like um, well, know, trying to buy a car or a house or maintain my credit for certain things there's nothing else really I'm buying yeah in my age. I definitely understand that well if you do decide to change your mind or if something comes up where they don't sell it at auction for whatever reason um, keep my number here and uh, I'll be more than happy to be a resource for you to try to help you navigate uh, if you do want to do something in the future will. okay I'm going to and I'm going to text you right after this phone call you take text messages on this number correct uh, text me. Yeah, gonna text you. Tell me. I'm gonna text you my contact uh, information just so you know who you were speaking to. So, like, you'll know. Uh, it's Chris, right? Y- yes, Chris with St. Louis it's Cash Chris, Buyers. Uh, Correct. Yeah. You gonna text it to me, Chris? Okay. Uh, no, I have. All right, Carl. You have a good rest uh, of the day. Okay. Uh, thank you. you too. All right. You too. Bye bye. So if you notice on that call, I did not just accept the first no, even though he doesn't have the motivation. He's tired. It's not a tired landlord. This is a tired borrower, tired seller, tired homeowner. He's tired of this house. He don't want to deal with it. He says he's got five to 10 K he could have put into the deal to help it. That might be enough to reinstate the loan. But I asked him multiple times, if there is a way to stop this deal, stop this auction, and prevent this uh, foreclosure, would you want me to attempt it? If they say no more than once, I can't make them sell me the house. I can't make them do business with me. I only work with people who wanna work with me. And that's what you should do as well. You cannot make motivation or create motivation. What we're doing is looking to find motivation. We're looking for people with real estate problems that we can really help out. And uh, hopefully you learn something from that call. If you wanna learn more, check out futurecashflowclub.com Follow me on all social media outlets at Chris Monroe STL. Do what you do. Be who you be. And I'll see you before you see me. So I want to get into real estate, but don't know where to start. Well, what I would say is to join the Future Cash Flow Club. It's a community of investors where we talk about wholesaling. We talk about creative deal structuring, buying houses subject to all of the creative stuff that everybody's talking about. You don't need a real estate license or any of that. Wow. Where do I sign up? Well, I would say go to futurecashflowclub.com. That's futurecashflowclub.com. You can even get a free trial. Try it out today.